watch Kakaguri or not. And the short answer for that is no, in my opinion. I don't think it's a very good anime. I think it completely misses the mock of the But it has good moments though. So I think it primarily depends on what you want. Do you want an anime about sex fetish or something? Hentai board like, I don't know. Or do you want a gambling anime? If you want a gambling anime as it's presented, as the people will probably tell you if you go to the one, then this is not the anime for you. So I feel that what I expected when I was, uh, watched uh, Kaguri at the beginning, I expected this right. I expected the plans of being, <laughs> what's my evil plan? Well, this is my plan. And this is how I trap you in this game. That's what I expected. But what I got is more like this. Uh, Monster Musume. And that actually, well, actually, I would prefer to have Monster Musume because Monster Musume is way sexier than Kaguri and just way better. So, and I do laugh at it and it's generally funny. So, so the good points it has done, the quirky characters. The character design is pretty good, they look different, all the council members have interesting appearance and so on. It definitely is borderline on the hentai itch, I would say. Some weird scenes. It's absolutely an etchy anime. Absolutely by far. That's, that's why I would categorize this anime as primarily an etchy anime. Way more than gambling. And was like Dolly Girl. Has a funny moment and has a lot of really badass epic moments. Say etchy scenes. Sexually toned scenes like this in here. It's both weird to try to kill herself. And then when she's failing now. She's going to be like oh yeah oh yeah. And it's going to be like super turning her on. So the anime... In my opinion, at least, it goes way more into this etchiness. On the same time, the anime has though really cool epic scenes. A few of them though, but they are really badass. Like this scene, the Buddha scene. Baka! So my first problem with this anime is, there's like no build-up. There's no strategy how they play the game. They just kind of use, I would say, the word juvenile sheets all the time. And they don't really build up the strategy at all. And not just the opponents, but also the main character never explains anything she's doing to us or like gives some incident and I'm gonna do this now or this. So there's never any like, I don't feel there's any way that we can, we can have guidance okay to do this and this now. So that is really weird as anime and that just defeats the whole gambling aspect of it. It defeats the whole uh, yeah, general like strategy, right? There, there is no, okay, if he does A, then I should do B, then I should do C. I commented later as well, but I think it's a huge problem. But what I expect from a gambling anime is something like, oh shit, if he does this now, that this happens. I, I expect that to happen, not just this weird sexual stuff all the time. So for example, here's a good example from Akagi. So in this scene here then, he has to play the one man, because they always oh, safe. who would ever wait for one man, because it's a close one man wait. And But of course Akagi, because Akagi is crazy good, he's like, oh, what? Why did you wait for the one one mate? Why would you do this? Why would you do this? That's a big issue here at this anime. You, you watch the anime and you're like, there's never that feeling when someone is like, ah, I got you with my plan, or like, I knew you were gonna play this, so I expect this thing, or I switch that thing. So then I can't just have to play Mahjong, and you have these different hands, and you have different possibilities how you can win the game, or so on with different hands, and different hands, I guess, <laughs> have different options. So a good hand, have more than one weight. So it means you're waiting for maybe like three bricks or uh, five or seven or in some insane good bricks. Usually you have like three or so. But Akagi, they have only one weight for an eye, to, so it's an eye weight. And it's at the most border, the edge case, like one man, they have one to nine, so it's the edge. Horrible weight, right? So Akagi is playing so bad on purpose. That's the build up, right? It's playing bad on purpose, it's a strategy. But video strategy and the point is like, oh, I can play this easily. No one would ever do this. He's like, ha ha ha, I'm in. I know you would think that's safe. That's why it's not safe, right? And that never happens in Kaguri. Never. They said they have some weird sheets, and then she's like, oh, I saw your seat, I won. Right. And they, they just said, Ugh. in a bad way. They're all cheating, like, I said earlier, juvenile manner. The sheets are very obvious. That's it pretty much. Like, okay, so I'm gonna face you with this game. And you're like, okay, fine. What is this game? Oh, this is a game I made myself. Where it's like, okay. I mean, if it's like watching a bad comedy, right? So someone is like, no, but the rules are this. No, they're not. Yes, I made the rules yesterday. So that's the rules. That's how it feels when you watch this anime, to be honest. Like, some of the games are literally made by the opponent. <laughs> right? And then that's like, Okay, and you're playing it in their like host, in their like home, 
location and they have some helpers that like the that the dealer or the courier that gives them the cards or whatever stickers or whatever they're playing with. She works with the person they're playing with, like literally officially works with them and so on. That is seems really fishy to me. Or like, oh we're gonna play this game with my dice or my card deck or something. You know, who would ever do that? Like that's the big problem. You just, their sheets are so bad. Like they're not they're not bad because they're cheating, but they're bad at cheating because the sheets are so obviously even if you wouldn't know exactly what they're doing. Like if you ask me, are we gonna play this game about like several million yen? I'd be like, nah, I don't know, but like but okay, what's what's this game? And like, oh let's play my game. I'd be like, no, I'm gonna play your game. Okay, let's play with my dice. And I go first. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't think so, because those dice are probably loaded. Like, this is the level they're cheating on. They're cheating on such a stupid way. To be, that's my opinion. Like, I'm seriously. That, I've cheated a lot of my life. No, but I, I, I have gambled a lot of my life. And I've spotted a lot of cheaters. And I've worked creepy. I've watched the dealer. And I've spotted them throughout cheating so on, right? And these people there, they are cheating in a horrible way. They have like level 1 of 100 cheating. That's the way I feel. And that also really bugs me in the wrong way. How this universe works. Because how did these people get to the power they already are at? Because it's facing people that already are established their power. And we see them playing, right? And they're like this, they are powerhouses at the school. And they are all already high up in the ranks. How did they get up in the ranks? The games, they're, they're, they're all bad at the games. They have, not only that, everyone else is really stupid and play really badly. But just generally... Those the level of sheets they have as I get there are so obvious that they're gonna cheat on something. You don't know exactly how she's gonna cheat with her own deck, but you know that her deck is loaded, right? So you know you won't accept the deal. So how did she ever get to a level of stature as they have? So for example, here's a sample of her own episode. She brings her own decks. And it's like, oh yeah, let's gonna do this. Everyone's like, oh yeah, she can never beat her, and you know, he's like, oh my god, oh, it's over. Like like, how do we get in that position? How did she get there to begin with? If she, so was like, oh, I only play with my own stuff. And it's like, who would ever accept it to begin with? Then, then she have to have to give them really good odds. Like, oh, we can play with my game, but if you win, I have to give you 10,000 yen. If you, and if I win, I get 100 yen or something. Like, who would ever accept those deals otherwise, right? There's one thing because she's already getting to the school and her opponents are already high ramp positionings. But it makes no sense how they ever got there to begin with. So that's my big problem. That's a huge problem with me. They're all so far. They're all really bad at cheating, and they don't even do it in an intelligent or good way. If you watch other animes that were much more dramatic than later here, for example, One Out, they had this like really intriguing cheating. They're like, oh, they're bugging them. They're doing this and this and this. Like they have these really, really advanced cheats, right? Like seriously, like illegal, <laughs> like yeah, like bugging the rooms and so on. And they're the main character. He's like, oh, I know they're doing this. So I'm gonna tell my team to do plan A, and his team goes and do plan A, and then they still win because they're playing baseball. And he's like, they're doing A stuff, but I'm gonna do C, even though I said A to them, because I know that all the guys are listening in. So they're gonna think that I also will do A, but I will do C instead purposely. They will do the B then, so I will exhibit B. He does that kind of shit, right? That's an advanced level thing. This is more like, she has some kind of powers, like, hmm, this is your shit. They have so really stupid simple sheets so far and i think and my friends are telling me oh it's gonna be best later so but I, I, don't, I don't care to be honest i think this is just it makes no sense to me how they would get to a power station to begin with so now they show how i complain about this in order short reviews of uh, kaguri is that there's no real strategical skills in it and something that's very keen on like gambling is the logical, it's a mind thing, right? It's how you get someone's head, how you make the things you think and so on, right? That's huge. And for me, gambling anime is a very close sport anime, in my opinion, and then slightly close to Shonen or Sane, depending on how this is, right? But gambling is more sane in the anime because it's more in the mind. And it's more threatening and it's more dangerous and so on, right? That's why it gets into that more sort of logical thing. So that's why those genres usually combine. So, for example, you saw what was again, one of my favorites. There's a baseball anime, but it's much more of a gambling, slow anime, not a sport anime. Main character is evil as well and so on. And it really gets another feel into it. And in this anime, they're never using any mental skills. I will, some of you say I'm wrong because last week, and I and I agreed, episode 4 uh, was my favorite so far. And that's probably the only time I ever saw them using any mental skills. So maybe I was pretty wrong, maybe the anime has disproved me, and the more episodes will come, maybe we change it around. But that being said, so far at least, I think the level of mental skills they're using is like 1 out of 10 as well. It's just really, it's like, wow, 
This is so simple. And the thing that I'm talking about mainly is this thing called Yomi. So Yomi, Yomi, it's a Japanese concept of getting in someone's head. And this is something we're talking about a lot when playing fighting games, but also for most of and so on. And so generally, Yomi is not just about, ha, huh, I predicted how you were gonna play. Ha ha, no, no, no. It's all about also like, causing you to play away. So I say it again, one out, which I absolutely recommend way over this anime. It's 10 times better this anime. Uh, he has a scene in one out where he tells his opponent, like, oh, uh, you have a tell. When you throw your ball like that, I know you can do, do a fastball. Ha <laughs> ha. And then, and then his allies are like, his Nakamas, they're like, why, why do you tell him that? Now he knows that he will stop doing it. He's like, no, no, he doesn't have a tell. He doesn't have a hint that he's playing fastballs. And they're like, why, why would you say so then? Because no, he thinks he has a tell. So then, because of that, he's overacting when he's not doing it right. He's like, no, I'm gonna do this thing now. So he's like, I, I gave him a tell. <laughs> And then Oregon's like, shit, you ruined his career. You, you fucked his head, so you ruined his career for life. He's like, you gotta win. <laughs> Winning is everything, right? So, <laughs> like, that is the mental of your case. But not only are you, like, predicting your opponent, you're creating their behavior. And that is something this anime is absolutely missing out on. Akagi, as well as I linked earlier, earlier, Jenny does it a lot too, right? So a lot of this, like, well... You think this is safe, so I make you believe that ice are unsafe in my own. And then later on, when you're playing, ice actually are safe because, like, yeah, like I'm not gonna play ice all the time, but because I once tricked you with that thing, it's like, oh yeah. And fighting games, then why you always so part of the fighting games usually it's because you're playing a street fighter game or something, and you punch someone right, and after that they are in, they are they're in the ground, and you're like, okay, if I super now from the ground, which is a real battle usually. But if you do that, and you don't block that, and you lose half your life, you lose the round, you're probably next round gonna be like, I probably should block now when he's on the ground with full meter, because he might super me. He might do critical art. But he won't, because it's usually generally a bad path to do. But that's how you get in their mind. You get the effectual thing happens once, and it happens. That is one way. The one as well when he tells someone that I see your weakness, and that isn't the weakness, that's even trickier. But yeah, this is not this anime though. This anime just had these like, weird battles, and they just like, I, I saw your shit. This is how your shit works, and I won. Like, that's what you me. They have a very strict plan of just, if I can decipher your code, I win, right? It's not like I can see your, like, complicated strategies, and I'm gonna touch on that thing over here, and a little over here. And that's gonna make you rearrange your behavior, and that's how I can beat you. Like, the level of this gambling this anime is, like, bottom level. It's bottom level. It's like, I punch you, you kick me, and I pass you harder, so I win, right? It's a fire, just bigger fireball, uh, in my opinion. And I, I really stand by this. This is probably my biggest favorite anime, that it is so far from such a logical anime, because this really is, it never has that kind of, no, as I mentioned earlier, there's no strategy, but there's also never anything like, I affected how you're thinking and so on. I might be wrong, because it's shown a very little sign of that, last episode I watched, so I might be wrong, maybe the manga is great in that, with this right now, but for me, currently, I would not recommend that anime at all as a anime, right? Because it's not so logically at all. It's just etchy stuff. The issue I have also with anime, and this is something I think they want people to agree with this. The other things, I guess, people saying, oh, you want it to complicate it, or you want this to this. But I think this is something I talk to a lot of people with, uh, and this uh, seems to be the general issue people have with it. I don't think so. So this more issue then, I think this is the issue that most people agree with me on, is there's no tension because you don't understand what they're battling. So this issue with no tension, I think, is an issue that most people agree with me on. I thought a lot of people about this, and this at least seems to be... Some people say, oh, I love you, Yumiko, I love this thing, I love the etchy, I love this thing. And I agree with that. I, I don't say this anime is horrible, don't get me wrong. The anime has some really good sexy moments, to be honest. That's good with this anime. But it's not generally like a good gambling or something anime. But this thing, whatever, though, I think what I talk about is people agree with me, and this is the general issue that I have. Uh, it's no tension. And what I mean with that is that we don't understand how much money they are losing. I mean, you understand how much money is literally, like how much money is. But we don't understand how much money it means to them. But it goes for both the main character, her supportive character, her enemies, every character. So, first and foremost, they are supposed to be rich kids. So, if you watch the anime, yet, you know. They were presented as super rich kids, like the rich kids in Japan, 
like oh my dad owns this uh, blah, 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 biggest toy company or something in Japan and they're worth billions of yen or something and then they lose like 10 million yen and, and a yen is about a hundred of a dollar so 10 million yen that is uh, ten hundred ten thousand dollars so uh, I think maybe a little more eleven thousand maybe but it's uh, something like that and I don't think curse it but something like that and it is not no money but if your daddy is the biggest guy in Japan in something. It's like, oh, my dad owns Google. And I lost $10,000. It's like, would you become someone a slave over that? You would just go to daddy and probably get the money out, right? And sure, they do get to hire like several hundred millions and then 20 million and so on. But it's never stated in this anime ever pretty much how much money people has. So, so sure, they do get to say, oh, no, I have this debt of millions. So, I guess they were all the money they had. But it still feels weird that it's just like really back and forth this thing between all the characters that they cannot back like, pay out the money they own and it feels like she should beat someone and take like oh you owe me now a billion yen and she's like well i had 20 billion so you know whatever and that's kind of how she started out and i just feel that there is no you don't feel that there's no drama right to it you don't really feel like she cares about losing um and, and the same goes for the other characters as well sometimes you do see some depression as well but it's like it even forward and then all the time, it feels so forced. It's like, oh no, I lost 50 million yen. It's like, but then your daddy has 20, 20 billion yen. So does that little money matter to you? That's why I interpreted your backstory. So that to me is, gives me, like, I don't care really. It feels like I should, should I care about them? Should I have them? Or it's really funny. It's what she did. Yumiko, she's like, oh yeah, yeah. you know, she's, she's just happy. She's just joking around being a slave. Uh, and generally enjoying it when she loses and so on, or winning, and it just doesn't matter to her. And I agree, don't get me wrong, I agree this is funny, this is etchy, this is borderline hentai. This is what it animates to me, but it has, there's no tension on it. I don't feel tension when I watch the anime. And when I compare this to Kandi, one of my absolute favorite animes ever, Kandi is all about a main character that has no money. A main character that is... Oh my god, if I lose this now, I am gonna be in debt for a whole life. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose my finger. Like, there's some serious drama, some serious tension every time you play. The big problem is the nerd asset of it. There is never face has a goal either. So, when you watch a movie, like a typical one half hour, two hour movie in Hollywood, or, you know, typical American movie, they usually, and it's a gambling movie, <laughs> I guess that in case, case and I was like, they go into Las Vegas or something, right, or Atlantic City or whatever to play money. There is some kind of tension and goal there. It's like, I want to marry this girl. We've been a fiancé for three years now, but I can't pay for the wedding, and I can't pay for this, the house we want. And if you can't do that, she won't marry me, so I have to go. I want to have $50,000, but if I go and win money on those money, you know, if I manage to make more, like double that something, then we can find and have the bill that I want. And there's nothing of that, there's no tension of that here, right? Because there's no context, there's lack of context in how much money she has, how much money it means to win. Like, it's never it's like, oh, I won 50 million yen from you, I'm so happy now. It's like, huh, ah, 50 million yen, that's kind of the feeling when she wins. And I don't like that, too. I really don't like it. I like that she's like, hee hee hee, I'm a kitten now. That, that, is happy. that is funny, but I don't like that she's so indifferent to winning. She just likes to gamble, and, and, and it never feels like, Oh, she just reached her goal now. Like, there's no goal in it. We watched Kabi, as I mentioned here, but it's all the time. But if I can just win this money now, I can buy this thing. If I can win this money, I can buy out my friends from slavery. Like, they have this kind of huge pressure on right? And that's the depression. I mean, I guess the Sava Sava thing. But if that gets you to a certain... I think the same thing, as I mentioned, with all the movies you watch, this two-hour movie is way shorter than the anime season, right? And they still have the kind of, like, I have to do this for X reason. Right, and then you also fight someone that might be an evil corporation, and then you know that okay, this evil corporation they have billions of trillion of dollars. So if they lose, you don't care about. It. They deserve to lose, or they might face someone else in the final where you have some supportive backstories like, oh god, she is so poor too. I don't really know real she, and it's like I, I want the main character to win, but at the same time, it's like you, these are all tension, there's a lot of narrative tension and narrative storyline. This anime has nothing of that. You don't care who wins, in a way. You're obviously voting for the main character, I guess, because he's the main character, but the main character is, is in arguably an evil character, and so on. So, like, who are you? Who, are you, who do you care for win? I don't... I honestly don't really do that. I'm just thinking, laughing at it. It's, it's actually 
and it's funny. But what, what else is it? So for this anime and why I want to recommend it, I'm just gonna go into a few other uh, points here, which I feel this is more like my personal thing. I can't really compare it to anything. So if you have something that's comparable to this, absolutely leave a comment and tip me about a good anime. List. So the problem I have with this thing, that this is this feels like I think I'm right, but I don't know really uh, because I haven't created yet. Is weekly battles. This anime has this weekly. They go in, they fight, and it's over. And I don't like that. I don't like that. I, I would much rather have them. Have this, okay, we're gonna play this game, it takes three episodes, there's a lot of planning, it's very advanced rules, and so on. And I do compare gaming anime, sport anime, in a lot of senses, and it's very uncommon to either. They also have like 10 episodes, Ice Shield has like at least 10 episode battles and so on in games. Those might be a little too long and the pace might be bad, but still, I'd rather have that. And it's like one episode of like, okay, it's over, because they have pretty much some sex jokes, some jokes, some fetish jokes, whatever, right? And then they have like a 10 minute of battle, and then it's over. So they have even like half the episode can just be the battle. That's a really short amount of time. And I really don't feel like I have time to really like establish how does the game works, how does this thing. I much rather have an extended battle. That might be better later on in the anime, though. It might be much better later in the manga. It probably is. But I think generally it's not a good formula. And if you have something, and I really mean it, if you have something, because I can't even think of an anime has done this with a gambling anime when you do weekly gamblings. Uh, every gambling anime I watched that I can remember at least have like 3 to like 20 episodes of gambling, pretty much like 3 to 5 or so. I can't even think of an anime that does this thing. So if, yeah, I'm, I'm open for an annotation. Another thing that it comes with this thing that I think is the same general issue on a weekly battle is the games and rules play poorly, in my opinion. And this is definitely primarily because they are so short. So it's kind of like, oh, we're gonna play this. These are the rules. You get like one minute, half a minute explanation. And then they play right away. And I wanna sit there and think, ah, oh, probability for this and this. I wanna sit there in my mind and have time of thinking, mm hmm, this is the problem of this game. Or I wanna have someone explain that to me now. Maybe I'm stupid, but I wanna have the main character or the supportive character say that, oh, yes, in this game, you have to think about these things. Uh huh. Like I want that. I want that. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't go for the exposition of the games. And that is one thing that I disliked in this anime is that it really shows for me this anime cares about the sexy stuff. It doesn't care about the games. It doesn't care about the gambling. It doesn't care about establishing interest in games or interest in strategies. It's just like game over. You know, do some orgasm thing. Uh, like that is what this game is about. Uh, the anime is about, and, I, and that really bothers me. I want it to be more like, ah, oh, this thing. And one thing I have to say though, that really, I don't, I don't get, is that they have these games, and they're kind of like real world games, but they have made changes to them that makes them almost like real world games. And that is really fascinating for me. So for example, they have this card game, which is which I have played in real life. On money and so on, not a big game, but you have, I've played it for money for sure. And I know the, the probability of the game, because I've calculated it before. And also I should note, I said I have to work as a probability math teacher for a while, so I have all of this like, and I usually show a lot of like, gambling and, and so on. I work with like, dealers and stuff like that, and I, I do a lot of gambling math theory, right? Game, game theory, uh, when I teach that. So I've done all the math for this game earlier in my life, used for like a lecture example as well, many of them. And so I see this game, and I'm like, this is the exact same game that I played in real life. You used to have 40 instead of 52 cards, which I guess it is for cheating, that's why I think they have that. But it really irritates me because then I have to think, okay, what are the actual values now? So I know that, okay, if you see that, chance of winning is like 40%. Uh, and that means that, well, it's three less cards per type. So I guess it's like 40% plus, probably like 52%. You know, but I have to redo that math in my head, right? And I think that anyone that has some experience in gambling here and play these similar games are going to be like, why can't you just use the real game? And it really irritates me. They have a roulette game one episode, pretty much, but it's not exactly roulette. And I work with roulette tables, so I know exactly all the probability of all the values and so on. And I'm just like, why can't this be roulette? Like, why do I have to read? As the viewer, I don't want to have to sit there and rethink this thing. And also, I want to learn something from the game, so I want to sit there and say, ah, that's how you play, be a good roulette player. I feel that a, a good author would be like, okay, I'm going to explain how this character is good at roulette because of these reasons. And it's like, ah, oh, yeah, that's interesting. That's I'm gonna take in real life in use when I play roulette. But this animals do that. You keep doing these weird things. So my last point I want to mention here. Um, 
Instant Discord. This is a game. Instant this thing. This is a game called Econ from Kaji. And the point of each game is that the slave is the only card that can beat the emperor. Emperor beats everything else. But you have one on one slave or emperor and something about those. So it's a game that has a lot of philosophy. And that's the last thing that I lack in this anime combined with what I mentioned earlier. So what I mean with that is that when I watched Kaji and talked about e game, I was like, man, this is some great philosophy here. This is some actually like this is some serious philosophy. I was like, yeah, yeah, interesting. This is something I can take with me in normal life. And I mean anime is very dear to me, and a lot of animes give me a lot of inspiration for general stuff, right? And it's like this is great. And I think a lot of sociological animes do that. They do teach you stuff that you can use. Uh, or, you know, be one self aware of something, right? Or use generally polit politics and so on. And this anime, everyone is just like, Aah! pretty much I feel. They all use nutcases. They all use nutcases. They all use weird, etchy nutcases. I much rather have an actual sociological anime when they tell you this is a card game. This card game represents like the political bureaucracy of America. And it's like, I rather have that, okay? I want that, to be honest. Maybe I'm obviously I'm biased though. And I, I, and I admit it, I'm biased. I want that much rather than some hentai. Uh, but it really is like, come on. Why can't the games be like that? If they're gonna be new games you made yourself, make them be interesting. Make them be like, this is because of this reason, yeah. This anime. So last then I want to say again then that I don't think the anime is horrible. I think it's just a very mediocre fetish anime. Uh, and I really mean that. So if you ask me, do I recommend this anime? No, I don't, because there are many other animes that you, I would really recommend them in that genre. I think this anime is completely misgenre. I would much rather call it Echi. And then I compare it to, for example, Monster Musum, as I mentioned earlier, which is a much better anime. And you know, whatever. Green Green, Girls Bravo, Tenshu Moyo, Classic, Love Hina, that's a more horror than I suppose. But still, so if you want more like a sane and etchy, that's a couple of this and that, go and watch them instead. This anime doesn't really bring it uh, on the sexy level at all, and the character is kind of weird. But I do understand that people like it. I'm not saying that you're you're wrong if you're liking it, I'm saying that I, I hope you watched other mess before. You probably have though, <laughs> but I was like, ah! And if you want what I want, Personally, then, uh, if you want gambling animes, my top three, as always, are Kaji, Akagi, and One Out. Those are my three absolute favorite gambling so anime. They're so awesome. And there are a couple of other ones that you can ask, of course, if you for a recommendation. But those are my absolute three. You should watch those three first way before you watch the anime. Absolutely way before. The anime can't even compare. I think the anime isn't even half as good as, like, Kaji. Okay, Kaji is one of my top ten animes ever. Um, it is amazing. I mean, one else I usually ask called my favorite sport anime. It's not even a sport anime. I was like, it's baseball. <laughs> it's like I have it on top one. So because it's not uh, Kali is better than the one else. So I'm like, ah, what I'm putting one else over. It, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Um, this anime doesn't teach me stuff, and that really bothers me. And also, then again, the strategies are so simple. And someone probably gonna comment and say you were completely wrong when you when you watch ten episode or like we're not ten episodes, but if you watch the full anime. Go to the manga, read 20 chapters in the manga where, you're, where the anime won't ever go into. You're gonna say, oh, this is wrong. And probably, it feels like the anime is getting better and better. So I guess the manga is probably better uh, than more goes into. But I compared this to the first episode of One Out. Uh, talking about this like, ha, he's procrastinating. He knows you're weak. He's in your head. He's zooming in you. Yeah, like in this imagine that pretty much episode, like 10 minutes in episode one and in One Out. They're like... That that guy's your me so strong, so you've lost already. You lost before you even enter the field because this reason. And she covers this like like Japanese culture people. You should act like this. That's why he wins because he acts like this. And then Goon is like five minute exposition of why do you lose in baseball against this guy? And uh, right away I'm like, man, this anime here, this first like it's 15 minutes are really high value for me. Like there's a life lesson to learn there. It's very very interesting. It's very very good writing. And this anime here so far is like, <laughs> I am cuckoo. That's what I feel when they're playing the game. And it's really hilarious. So if you want, if you want to watch the anime, because you like that, oh, etchy and weird jokes, and go ahead. I won't blame you. I'm going to keep watching this anime and laugh at it, right? But I know that I'm not going to learn anything. And I say again that I really do feel that you can uh, recommend so many other etchy animes over this. And that's my problem with it. I think primarily that it's, W wrong genre, 
and there are many other genre, uh, many other from the same genre that is better that most people probably haven't watched yet, or like they watched some of them, but all of them. Like go and watch the classic ones then. So anyway, that is for me, and I hope you enjoyed this. And definitely to comment on how people are gonna dislike this because they're like, oh, Kicking Goose is the best thing in the summer. Uh, but like, come on, we have Ballroom Yakuza, that's way better. It's a sport anime. Uh, we have new game, we have gamers, I love gamers coming tomorrow. That's surprisingly good. New game, lots more drama than usually been. Um, and so on. Of course, we have my hero. Um, yeah, so no, I think this is within top 10 for me. I even almost like uh, Altir that I watched yesterday. Oh my god. Maybe the question of now about I don't know. We, uh, I think it's an okay anime uh, if you want, actually. So, anyway, see you guys and have a great day.